Vinyl outsells CD again. Has the world gone insane? Come on, we all know that vinyl is a vastly inferior medium than CD. CD itself isn't without its problems, but why are people so deluded that in 2022 they bought more vinyl than CD? And in 2023 they made that same crazy mistake again. <sighs> Will 2024 be the year they learn some sense? OK, let's put some figures on this. According to the RIAA, Recording Industry Association of America, the total recorded music revenue for 2023 was $17.1 billion. That's a lot of money. Too much to comprehend, I think, at least for me, and possibly for you too. So I asked the internet. $17.1 billion will buy you 255 Falcon 9 rocket launches. <laughs> it's a lot of money. So how much of this is spent on good old-fashioned CDs? 537.1 million, half a billion. And on good, even more old-fashioned vinyl, 1.4 billion, almost three times CD. I'll ask my question again. Has the world gone insane? <laughs> or perhaps it's just the USA and the rest of the world has kept at least some degree of its sanity. I'll put the link to this data in the description below so you can check it out. You can check out this madness for yourself. So who's spending all this money, whether vinyl or CD? And what artists are they spending it on? I'll give you a moment to guess an artist. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? This I have from Billboard, who get their statistics from Luminate Data. Or is it Luminate? Taylor Swift's 1989, Taylor's version, tops the vinyl chart with sales of just over a million. So one in every 331.9 US citizens owns a copy. And how much are they paying for ownership of this rapidly degrading medium? Well, I've looked at Amazon and what I see today is that you can get your own copy of 1989, Taylor's version, for a, for a mere $38.86, plus, I suspect, tax at the checkout. My affiliate link is in the description. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> $38.86. I have a Spotify subscription and I can listen to this for zero marginal cost. Just saying. OK, there is a bit of a disconnect here in that this is a 2LP set. But, and I'll put my own spin on this, it isn't a double album. It's one album that takes up two LPs. As with the CD, the one CD set, there are 21 tracks. Ten and a half tracks per side of a single disc might be possible, but it would be pushing things in terms of audio quality. Vinyl-loving commenters might like to weigh in on the question of playing time per side versus audio quality. Now, what about the CD? How much does that cost? Again, I'm talking about pricing that I see today, and it might change. But $12.98 USD. Again, probably plus tax. Well, according to my maths, $12.98 is a lot less than $38.96, $26 less, almost. And in terms of music, we are absolutely comparing like with like. 21 tracks on vinyl, 21 tracks on CD. OK, I guess that you might guess which I would prefer. But I'm an old geezer, and according to my YouTube statistics, you are too. <laughs> I'm not really in the market for Taylor Swift, although having said that, if you search the internet thoroughly, you might find a couple of my cover versions. <laughs> I keep telling people they are AI imitations, and that's a story I should probably stick with. But in all likelihood, neither you nor I are in the target market for this music. So who's buying? I'm going to have to say, well, let Business Insider tell you that they, lean, female and white, make under $50,000 and are suburban millennials. Of course, that's not everyone. 48% are male, 55% suburban, 26% city, 21% rural, with me, 55% Democrat, 45% millennial, 21 Gen X, 11 Gen Z. There's a hell of a Venn diagram in this. <laughs> but I notice that 23% are boomers. Yay, boomers! <laughs> so maybe I should be a fan after all. Who's buying all these vinyls? Vinyls. <laughs> I'm going to speculate, and it is speculation. 
because I can't find much more in the way of granular statistics than I've given already. But here are some of the people who are buying 1989, Taylor's version, on vinyl. Lauren thinks vinyl is cool, and she plays her small but much-loved collection on her Crosley. And collecting, owning and playing 1989, Taylor's version, gives her all the pleasure she wants. Owning the vinyl also qualifies her as a member of an affinity group among her friends. <laughs> of course, Daniel doesn't remember vinyl from the days before CD, but he sees it as having a kind of authenticity that can't be found in digital audio, CD or streaming. He aspires to quality and plays 1989, Taylor's version, on his project, and that's good enough for the moment. He hopes that a close analysis of Taylor's lyrics will help him better understand his own feelings. <laughs> Jennifer calls herself a Swifty and can afford the average 1,300 US dollars that Swifties pay to attend an era's tour concert. She actively seeks out other Swifties of a similar generation and she loves it that young women go to Taylor's concerts too. She has 1989, Taylor's version, on vinyl, but unfortunately she hasn't yet persuaded her husband to buy a turntable. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's an audiophile and he has a great system. Unlike many audiophiles, he has spent most of his budget on speakers and acoustic treatment for his listening room. <laughs> he doesn't mind being old-ish, but he would like to recapture some of the musical excitement of his youth. So instead of listening to Pink Floyd and Grateful Dead, he listens to Taylor Swift on vinyl. It's almost working. OK. <laughs> I'm making this up, but I don't think I'm too far wrong on vinyl. It's a nostalgia thing, an ownership thing, an affinity group thing. And if people get value from that, who's going to say they're wrong? Now, CD. Who's buying this at $12.98 USD plus tax? <laughs> Remember again that if you already have a streaming subscription, you can listen to Taylor Swift at zero marginal cost. Graham is well aware of the deficiencies of CD. And his greatest wish is that they could have been 12 inches in diameter with a proper sleeve and sleeve art. <laughs> However, he's a quality nut and he knows for sure that of what's commonly available to buy, CD is technically the best. He has tried streaming, but he doesn't believe that lossless services are always entirely lossless. Miles likes to be well prepared and if the worst ever does come to the worst, he'll be the most likely to survive. In the meantime, however, he buys CDs because he doesn't trust streaming services to keep his favourite music online. And he believes they will eventually segment, so you have to pay a separate subscription for each label. Maybe perhaps each artist. There's no power on earth, however, that can separate him from his CD copy of 1989, Taylor's version. <laughs> the phrase, cold, dead hands, runs through his mind every time he plays it. Adrian wants to get as close as possible to the original studio sound, and he believes that CD can give him this, and then he can keep it permanently. He has to find the best mastered version, of course, and he dislikes streaming because they tend only to offer remastered versions that sound less and less like the originals over time. When he finds the most well-mastered version of an album on CD, he can listen to it forever. <laughs> OK, this has been a bit of fun. I haven't covered every demographic, of course, but I don't think my imaginary examples are too far from the truth. But there's one more demographic that I haven't covered yet, and it applies to both vinyl and CD. Gift givers. <laughs> Remember when I said that the market for recorded music in 2023 was 17.1 billion? The market for gift giving is also huge. How huge is difficult to say because statistics that are available online are massively contradictory. But one states that the average American spends $656 on gifts every year. It wouldn't surprise me. But the thing is that gifts work best when they're physical, an actual thing that you can give to someone, even if it's a gift card that leads to an experience rather than a thing in itself. So how do you gift music? Gift someone a streaming subscription? Come on, they have one already. So other than streaming, vinyl wins. CD doesn't exactly lose, it does OK. Much of what I've said here is speculation, so I'd like my commenters to chime in and tell us why you think vinyl is doing so well, in itself and in comparison to CD. Or if you're not so vinylly inclined, 
What's your favorite medium for audio consumption? See you soon. I have 17 grandchildren and 23 great-grandchildren. I've bought 40 copies of 1989, Taylor's version, and an extra five in case there are any I don't know about.